Tainus Davyu Tess, how's everybody doing? Third Perek, Branu Perek, Seder Tainus Edel. Says the Mishnah, these series of fasts that we were speaking about, three, three, and then seven, for Yechidim and the Tzibor, it's Dafka, Berviya, Rishayna, the first Yoira, reigns one, two, and three, the first Revia. However, there are other things, says the Mishnah, that we go directly to the third series, to the series of seven. In other words, we do all the Chumras of the seven final fasts. And that is, for instance, if the produce looks different, it's not wheat, it's something else, it's chayich or whatever it is. If, let's say, the wheat dries out completely, then we don't do anything because it's already too late. That will be a tefillah shav according to one shot and Rashi. Even if it grows slightly, that's not a sign that the rain is going to help it. If the rain stops for 40 days, that's considered a maka that's going to bring, a batsaris that's going to bring a shortage. And that's dafka when you could bring it on a ship because the ship could contain a lot, so it's only a batsaris. Otherwise, it's considered a rav, a true fledged famine. If the price is very high, let's say saw besela, instead of one. For saw, with, for one sela, it's one saw for a sela. But you could buy it, that's considered a batsari, it's considered a shortage. If there's not a lot of money or you can't find the food, then even if it's four for one sela, which is the regular price, then it's considered a rav of famine. If it rains only for the plants, in other words, it rains nice and easy, or only for the trees, it's a very heavy rain, or only to fill up the cisterns, which is very forceful and quickly, it's not good for the plants or the trees, then we are matria. Matria for Yilonois, we cry of Hashem for trees on Pesach and Machlaikas, if we do that also on the Shemitah year, and according to everybody, if we don't have drinking water, you cry out even on Sukkot when it's like a nace that it should rain in. And on Shemitah, if it doesn't rain, or if there's a plague, what's a plague? Three people die in three days when you have 500 people. Askura, that people die from. A mapoilas, which is an earthquake that comes from the wind, Rashi says. All the surrounding cities just fast. They don't daven. According to Rabbi Kiva, the opposite. They just daven, they don't fast. But all the surrounding places would have to cry on a calamity that moves like a shidafa and a yurakain, which is bad winds that cause the, the crop to die out. And for arba, chasal, goivai, and according to Rishim Elazar, chagav, another type of locust, four types of locusts. If you have wild animals that go around killing babies, according to Rabbi Yossi, they're just seen in the city, and a war, that's also one of the things that you would cry for. Rabbi Elazar ben Parta, Says so from the Churban base Hamigdash, rain is tightened up. Sometimes it rains, sometimes it doesn't. And when it does rain in its proper time, it's like a musha, like a slave that got his salary on Sunday. He's able to do whatever he wants the whole week and make good bread. If he gets a lot of it, if there's a lot of rain, it's like a slave that got all his salary in one shot. And therefore, when he goes to the to grind it, every time you grind something, you're going to lose the same amount. So if you have a large amount of produce and you grind, you're going to lose that small amount. If you have a small amount, you're going to lose that small amount. If you have to go to the grind and grind it every single time, you're going to lose that small amount times the amount of times you went. So you lose out a lot more. Another mushroom in the Gemara is, if you have a lot of water, you can make proper cement. If you don't have enough water, then it comes out a little without the right consistency. Shimon Timni says that you cry on Shabbos for a plague, and Chacham didn't agree to him. He said, the only time you cry on Shabbos is when the city is surrounded with the enemy, or if the river is about to flood the city, or even a ship that's going under with a lot of people. According to Rabbi Yossi, that's not a good, good enough reason to cry on Shabbos. The only time you scream out on Shabbos is for help. You don't cry out for too much rain. And the Mishnah tells us the famous story with Choni Amagal. 
The reason he's called Chayin Magal is because they came to him and they said, please down for us for rain. So he made a circle and he stood in the circle and he said, he swore to Rabbi Shalom, he's not going to leave the circle until it rains. He says, I'm a Ben Ba'is in front of you, please let it rain. So Hashem made it rain very, very softly. He says, Loi kach shalti. I didn't ask for that. So it came down really heavy. He says, Loi kach shalti. Again, I didn't ask for that. I wanted Gishmi Bracha. And it rained perfectly, Gishmi Bracha, but it rained and it rained and it rained too much until people begged him, please ask it to stop. Shimon ben Shedach said, if you were just a regular person, I'll put you in Kherim. But What am I going to do? You're like a son who doesn't behave well in front of his father, but his father gives in to him. If people have started fasting and it started to rain, they don't have to finish the fast. We have Machlegis Tanakhama says that happened before Netzachama, according to Rebbe Lezer and Tarifin, that happened before Chatzos. And with that, we finish today's daf. Have a wonderful day.